Today, we're talking about ASCAR scopes. Not just this one, all of them. Because, for example, this is called 91F. What does the F stand for? What's the difference between FRA, PHQ, SQA, whatever? It's such a chaos. So let's sort it out today. Hey, this is Vienta Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So good to meet the Nand, and thanks for watching my channel. So I personally have at the moment four ASCAR scopes. And while I recommend this brand to about anybody, I think from the first one which I got, which was the FRA 400, I remember that people already at this point of time asked, well, what should I get, an FRA or a PHQ? And what's the difference? I'm confused. And they were right. These two lines are so similar. And I remember that already at this point of time, I wrote to Asgard and I said, actually, from my point of view, you should merge these two lines. That's pointless. But in the meantime, they added APO, SQA, now the F series. So there's more and more lines, which the abbreviation sounds random. And it's really hard to figure out what these lines are for and what makes them distinct. So this is why I took the time and tried to sort it out and now present it to you. And we will use as also a visual reference, a little cheat sheet that I created. And you will, as always, find such things on my Patreon account. Love space, love this channel? Then you'll love what's going on over on my Patreon. Behind the scenes content, early access, breaking news, exclusive tutorials, tips and tricks just for you, all for the price of a coffee. Go deeper, follow stories as they unfold, get personal support, and download all the supporting docs and data. Join our crew of space enthusiasts, support the channel, fuel the mission, and unlock a universe of extras. Links below. See you there. So we go now one by one through all the different lines and we start with the oldest one, the PHQ. And the fun part is that I asked Ascar to send me what these abbreviations mean and they did so. And there is really a meaning behind all of these abbreviations. Just the problem is they will be perfectly exchangeable or at least most of them. So PHQ stands for Photo quadruplet. Or they say it can also be for photo quality. So as you might realize, there's also other scopes of ASCAR which are quadruplets. So that's not so unique. But anyway, now you know what it stands for. I think interesting is also the PHQs. These are the scopes that SIVO uses. So if you buy a SIVO scope, you get an ASCAR quadruplet, a PHQ, which is just repainted. And I think a lot of people who buy SIVO scopes are not aware of that. But now what are these scopes? As stated, these are quadruplets, so they have a flattener included. They're rather slow, they're f.7 to 7.5. They're known that they are, have quite a good quality and you get them in quite long focal lengths. And if you want, you get a reducer for them which makes them also a little bit faster. So who would buy a PHQ? From my point of view, someone who needs a very long focal length and wants a better quality than the APO series and also wants to have the flattener right included. So that's for me about the only real use case for the PHQ line, the smaller focal length, Personally, I would really not go for the PHQ line. There are much better options now. And with that, let's go to the FRA series, which is also the same old I think about as the PHQ line. Now, what does FRA stands for? Flat field refractor astrograph. Isn't it logical? So the FRA series, these are quintuplets, pet's wall design. So Back focus is no issue at all. That's one of the advantages of the FRA series. It's much faster than the PHQ series. They're all F5.6. 
They have a nice image circle so that also full frame is feasible, but they're only available until 600 millimeters focal length. So if you need something longer, you have to go with another series. So I personally consider F array scopes as the perfect entry scope and also as a perfect compromise. They have a nice f-stop, they have a good quality, they're forgiving, you don't have to care about back focus, and they're not too expensive. So while the FRA series is also quite old, it has a lot of benefits and it's a very good option throughout the band. I personally had an FRA 400 and I really, really liked it. It was my first refractor, my first ASCAR scope, and so it's really dear to my heart, even based on that I have simply too many scopes I had to sell it. So next, let's talk about the APO series. And APO obviously stands for apochromatic, which makes a lot of sense because all the other ASCAR scopes are also apochromatic. So again, the name is meaningless, but the series not. The series is really cool. APO refractors are very affordable, narrow refractors. The APO refractor, which I just had in my hand, is the smallest one. And then it goes up to 203 millimeters. And obviously then it doesn't get cheap, but compared to what a competition asks for refractors like this, it's still a bargain. On the downside, they do not have the flattener included, but that can also be the plus side because like that you can very well also use it for visual astronomy, if out of whatever reason you would like to do something like that. And they also add a lot of different reducers to these scopes, which makes them very versatile. So for example, for my 103, there's a 0.6 reducer, which brings it down to about 450 millimeters. There's a 0.85 reducer. So this is also a good option for beginners who want to only buy one scope and then have different options with the reducers to make it wider and faster. And quality wise, they're really not bad. The quality suffers when you go to a radical, for example, no 0.6 reducers, but just like that with the flatteners, they bring really solid results. And with that, we come to this monster here, which is the SQA series. And I will immediately put it down again because what I'm just lifting now is 15 kilograms. So SQA stands for Super Quintuplet Astrograph. And the super is valid in about any dimension. It is super heavy, it is super expensive, and the quality is simply super. And it also has a super wide light circle, which would even allow for medium format. It obviously is pet small design. It's super fast with an f-stop of 4.8. And the one I just showed you is the narrowest one. And then there's also an 85, a 70, and a 55. I personally own this 106, but also the 70, and I'm just blown away by the quality and by the results that they produce. So if you can deal with the weight from a mount point of view, if you can deal with the cost, there's at the moment practically nothing better on the market down any brand than these SKAs. On the downside, and that's interesting, probably it's because of the design or whatever, ASCAR does not provide any reducer for these scopes and they don't plan to do it. I asked multiple times. So I can only imagine that design-wise, this is not feasible. That's kind of the disadvantage because especially when you have such a great scope, it would obviously be nice to make it even faster and also being more versatile, but it is what it is. And now we come full circle again to this one here, which is their newest series, F for flat field, and probably the most unnecessary series they invented. I reviewed this scope recently. It's good, it's solid, but there's still so many questions why they had to actually create this series. So these are 
quadruples. So the flattener is also included. There, might, there will also be reducers available for this one. They're rather cheap, they're rather light. And I think that's the point. It's an all-rounder scope. So it could also be an entry scope. And I think that's the selling point here. And there is, by the way, there's this joke that Steve Jobs should have gone once around Ascar. And I would agree. There's too many series. It's too confusing. From a business point of view, the more lines you have, the more models you have, the more complex, the more expensive it is because you have to stock them, you have to have different production lines and so on. So I really wonder if Ascar does itself a service by creating so many series and rather confusing the, the users than actually being very distinct. But if you believe we're finished, we're not. There's also the FMA series, which I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's the flat field multifunctional astrograph. And these are the very tiny refractors, which are used for wide field, for nightscapes and stuff like that. So that's a very unique sector, which goes from 135 millimeter focal length to 230 millimeter. And then they also issued the ATED recently, which is an ultra cheap beginner scope. And with that, we have covered everything. So if you're considering buying an ASCAR scope, I would first focus on the focal length. You want to have something wider, something more narrow. And then going from a binary point of view, do you want to spend more or less money? For the very narrow refractors, either go with the APO series, if you want to go on budget side, or go with the PHQ series, if you want to spend more and have the higher quality. And in the mid to wide range, if you want to spend more, go with the SQA line. And if you want to spend less, go with the FRA line. And if you're very much on a budget, then consider the F line, especially for the lower focal length, which the APO series does not cover. And if you want to have a look at the SK70, which I find amazing as it is still affordable and brings an amazing quality, have a look here. I hope that helped you a little bit sorting the whole thing out. So see you next time in clear skies.